In this video we're going to look at the node red status information and we're going to look at the node red status node. Now in node red all nodes have the ability to report the status uh, of the node uh, to the user interface, that's the admin user interface. And for nodes like MQTT you can see if the node is connected or not, you can see it's connecting, you can see it's disconnected. And in this video we're going to look at how the status information is displayed and now we can use it programmatically in the flows. We're going to look at things like the MQTT node and we're going to look at uh, how we can use the status information like is the node connected, is MQTT connected or is it disconnected and now we can use that to make decisions on whether we publish information or we, we don't publish information. So here is my test flow and here I've got um, two inject nodes leading into a switch node which goes to a debug node. And notice I've labeled the debug node debug1 and I've labeled this one debug2. It's important that you label the nodes so you can actually see which node uh, the status node is referring to and I'll show you that in, in, in a second. So we've, we're going to inject true or false into the switch node and we've got an MQTT node here that's um, showing its status information. It's connecting. It won't connect yet because I'm I've disconnected the MQTT broker and I'll start that up in a second. Okay, I've started the MQTT broker. You can see here that the node is now connected. Now, if I inject true into here, you can see the state here change and we see it goes on. And if I inject false into here, you can see the status here of the, the switch node is set to false or so, sorry, set to off. So, okay, how do I use that information in, in a flow? Well, to do that you need the status node and there's a status node here and I've I've created a status node here and I'm, f I'm feeding it straight into a debug node. Now when you open the status node here you can choose which nodes to select or uh, the which nodes to monitor should I say and here I'm monitoring the switch node and that's why I say it's important that you actually name the nodes so you can actually distinguish between them when you come to select them. You could select multiple nodes and you could select all nodes. Now, if you select multiple nodes or all nodes, then you have to have some way of differentiating between the nodes when you come into your functions. And to do that, you'll need the node ID. Now, each node has an ID. And if I just click on the debug node and go on for the information, you can see the ID appears here. And if I go on to the MQT node, and click on the information then you can see the ID appearing here and I'll show you that in the status information later the actual node ID is incorporated in the status information so now our flow we've got we've, we're monitoring the switch node it using the status node and I'm feeding it directly into the debug node so we can see what's coming out so let's go on to the debug messages and this time I'm going to inject true into here and this is picked up by the status node and passed into this debug node here and if I look at here over on this side you can see I've got a status object and if I open up the status object it's got some text which is off which is what you're seeing in the display here and then it's got a source object and there's the ID so if we need to pick up the ID of it we can pick it up through this object here through this source object here Now this configuration of feeding the status node into the debug node is very useful if you want to see what um, messages the node you want to monitor is generating. You can see I, it's generating the off message here and if I true then you can see it generates the on message. To use the status information we could just pass the status uh, node, or wire the status node directly into a function node and use it that way or wire it into another node and use it that way. But the better way uh, of using it is to actually capture the status information and that's what I'm doing here in this status node here. And this time I'm capturing the MQTT node which is the home test. Now, I've got two MQTT nodes and I haven't labeled them correctly on what they're both called home test but I do know which one is which as I say it's important that you do name them so you can differentiate between them so I'm monitoring the MQTT node and this node is down here and 
what I'm doing is I'm feeding the status information into this function node and the purpose of this function node is simply to capture that information and to store it in a global object and you can see it here global set now I could use a flow object because I'm I'm in the same flow but in this case I'm using a, a global object so this will capture the state of this MQTT node and you can see at the moment it's connected so if I go here and then I look at the context data and I look at that you see the MQTT status down here which is the variable I assigned here MQTT status and I stored it in the global object MQTT status and I'm passing in the entire status object so it's got the text it's got the source so I can pick out the the node if I have multiple nodes I can pick it out by the ID so all the information now is stored in the global object now because of that I can pick that information up in other nodes and in this case I'm going to pick it up in the in the function node uh, this function node here so if I scroll down here now I've got a, an inject node feeding into this function node feeding into the MQTT publish and if I look at this function node this function node picks up that information from the status it logs it and then it makes a decision based on the connection status so if the status is connected and you can see here this here the text matches the text here that is reporting if you can see on the right hand side matches that so if the status is connected then the message dot payload is connected and I return the message so I'm going to return a connected message and that returning the message is going to publish the message now if it's not connected then this function node returns a null and the message doesn't get published and then I just realized that for that to to demo that I actually need to connect it into the debug node so I'll do that now and I'll deploy it so I really want to see the output of this and so if I inject you can see the message coming out is connected see the payload here over here is connected it's coming out of this function node it will go into the MQT node and get published I, I can't show you that but you could see it coming out of the function node so now we've actually used the status information and we've made a decision on that information and we've used it to control how we would publish data now for the status node if I'd have left it to the default where it's actually picking up all nodes then I would have to find the node IDs of the nodes I was interested in and I could programmatically use that node ID to select the node rather than selecting it from here now I'm showing on the right hand side here I'm showing the status information being sent out from this node here and sorry this node here and you can see send the status the message is on but the source object and here's the ID of the object there and that object should match my switch because it's monitoring my switch um, let's just it ends in 7.4 and there's my switch ID ending in, in 7.4 so you can use the status nodes you can set it to all nodes or you can set it to a collection of nodes and in which case in your function node you'd programmatically have to pick up the the node ID to differentiate between the the nodes you were interested in and to extract the status information from that node okay so that brings us to the end of the video on on the status node the status node is very very useful especially when you're dealing with MQTT and HTTP it's very useful to be able to look at the connection status and to make decisions based on the connection status whether you publish whether you subscribe so if you've got any comments on the video then please leave them below if you like the video then use the buttons below and if you want to get notified of new videos on the channel then you can always subscribe and if you do use social media feel free to share it on social media if you want to until the next time goodbye